In this video, I'm going to be using addition to represent application problems even if subtraction would apply. In my first example, Donna is negative 5 miles relative to sea level. So let's suppose that this was sea level. You could think of this as being 0 miles above sea level and she is negative 5 miles. So that means that she's 5 miles below sea level. She then used her jetpack to fly 12 miles upward. So if she is negative 5 or 5 miles below sea level and she flew upwards 12, this means that she would have to go up 5 just to get to sea level. But we know that she goes upwards 12 miles. So the idea is if she already went 5 miles to get to sea level, you may want to know how far above sea level she is. And to answer that question, we are going to write a symbolic expression using addition that would represent that problem. So we know her starting place and we know her total change is up 12. Perhaps we want to know where she ended at relative to sea level. So she starts at negative 5, so I will write negative 5. And then since she went upwards, I'm going to say this is an addition problem. How much further did she go upwards? Well, she flew up 12 miles, so we're going to add the number 12. So this would be a symbolic expression using addition that represents the problem. To calculate the amount, you can either think of the problem as diagrammed here, that since 12 can be thought of as the number 5, and then you'd have to go 7 more to make 12, because 5 plus 7 is 12, that the answer would be that her final location would be 7 miles and since it's positive it would be 7 miles above sea level so the calculated amount would be 7 miles. If you're doing this problem in Math AS, however it's likely the case that you were just to type the number 7. This problem also could be done on the real number line. Even though the problem is literally a vertical problem you could solve it using a real number line which is horizontal Thinking of sea level as being zero, she started negative five miles relative to sea level, meaning five miles below sea level, so it was negative. And then when she flew upwards 12 miles, this would increase her altitude, so I would go to the right, and it being 12 miles, I would go to the right 12 units. So we're starting at negative five here on the number line. And since she increased her altitude by 12 miles, we would move to the right 12 units. You would have to move 5 units just to get to 0. And then to travel 12 miles total, since she's already traveled 5, you would have to travel 7 more. And that would put you at positive 7, meaning her final position relative to sea level was a positive 7, meaning she was above sea level. Either way, you get the number 7. Here's a similar problem, still involving Donna, except this time it's not relative to sea level. It says that Donna descended 400 feet, but it does not tell me what her original position was. Descended means going down 400 feet relative to some original position. Or you could think of this as her starting position. So she started here. She descended 400 feet, that's going down pictorially, and then it says after she ended here, she descended, which means she went down another 1,000 feet, so we would have her going down another 1,000. One way to denote that she went down is to draw an arrow, but numerically her change in position would be negative. So going down 400 feet, I'm going to think of as a negative 400. And then going down another 1,000 feet, I'm going to think of as changing her position another 1,000 feet in the negative direction. If you want now to know the total change, to find the total change, I could add the first change to the second change. Even though this could be done using a subtraction problem, I'm going to use an addition problem to represent the total change by simply adding the two different amounts, meaning how much the first change was and the second change, to figure out the total change. And total can always be thought of as adding the changes together 
and writing a symbolic expression would look like this. I'm going to write the number negative 400. That was the first change. And I'm going to write the second change, which is negative 1,000. And then to find the total change, this means to add them together. Then to calculate the amount, you could argue that since she went down 400 and then down another 1,000, that she went down a total of 1,400. The fact that the movement was downward would mean that my final answer is negative. You could argue this on the real number line. If you were at negative 400, perhaps I'll put a zero here just to denote that negative 400 would be to the left of zero. In fact, it would be 400 units to the left of zero. And then because she went another 1,000 feet in the negative direction, or you could think of it because we're adding a negative, that means we're going to move to the left another 1,000 units. So if we were to move to the left another 1,000 units here, this distance would be 1,000, but in the negative direction. So that if you've already gone 400 units to the left and you go another 1,000 units to the left, that would put you at negative 1,000. 400. So the calculated amount would be that negative 400 add another negative 1,000 would be negative 1,400 and we would consider this the calculated amount. Negative 1,400. Now that would be in feet but in math AS I believe they only want you to write the number negative 1,400 and I don't believe the comma would be necessary. And I'd like to do a couple more examples. In this example, Jose has $40 in his checking account, and Bella has negative $80, which you can think of it as she owes her bank $80 because she wrote a check for more money than what she had in her checking account. The question is, how much money do they have altogether? You can always think of it as a total or altogether as being addition because you're putting two things together. So because Jose has money, we will think of that as a positive amount, that's $40. And since we want the total to write a symbolic expression, we will add that to Bella's amount. So here's Jose's amount of positive $40. And we are going to add how much money Bella has. And Bella has negative $80. You can do the problem without the dollar symbols. Either case, you're going to be using addition because we want to know how much they have together if they were to combine their money. So you could think of it as Jose has $40, Bella has negative $80, which means she owes $80. If you put these two numbers together, what would be the combined amount? So this would be the symbolic expression, 40 plus negative 80. To calculate the amount, you could use a real number line. Let's say this is zero. 40 would be 40 units to the right of zero because it's positive. And because we're adding, I'm going to use the model, the real number line, where you move either left or right. The fact that we're adding a negative means we're going to move 80 units to the left. So if we are to move 80 units to the left, you might notice that if you moved 40 units to the left, you would get to zero. And you would have to move another 40 units to the left to make 80. 40 plus 40 is 80. So we're going to move 80 units from our original starting point of 40, but because it was negative, we're moving to the left or in the negative direction. So if you were at zero and you went 40 units to the left, by definition, that would put you at negative 40. So the calculated amount would be negative 40, and you would just type this into math ES. However, the problem would mean that together they would owe $40 if they were to combine their funds. Jose has 40, which would partially pay for Bella's debt of negative 80. The fact that they owe more money than they have means that they would end up in debt, and that's why the final answer came out to be negative. In my last example, we have a person named George who is carrying too much stuff, and we don't know how much stuff he started with. So if you want, you could think of this as his starting position would be some point on the real number line, not that you'd have to, but you could think of his starting position as being zero. This is not to mean that he was carrying zero pounds, it's just I need to have some starting position because eventually we're not going to predict how much he's carrying, we're just going to predict his total change. Well, why did it change? Well, if you read the story, 
it says that someone gave poor George 15 more pounds, so that would be a positive change of 15, and then because it was too much to carry, he accidentally dropped 5 pounds more. So again, we won't know how much he ended up carrying because we don't know what his starting amount was, but we can calculate the total change by adding the two different changes in the problem. So his first change was positive because someone gave him more stuff to carry. The first change can be thought of as positive 15. So I'm going to think of his starting amount as zero and that we add 15 pounds to his starting position which put, put him at positive 15 on the real number line. Again, this 15 doesn't mean that he's carrying 15 pounds. It's his change in weight, which means he's carrying 15 pounds more than he started. And the fact that it's more, we're going to assign a positive number to that. The second change that occurred, I'm going to think of as negative. And this is because what he was carrying got lighter because he dropped five pounds. We didn't add to the amount of weight he was carrying we decreased the amount of weight that he was carrying because of his accidental dropping of five of the pounds. So I'm going to think of the change as negative. So if you're at 15 on the real number line, that would be here. And you change by negative five, meaning you decrease by five, that would be five units back this way. You could represent this using a symbolic expression, and you could think of it as you started with his first change of 15 pounds, and we're going to add to that the second change so that we can find the total change. Total change can be thought of as adding the two changes together. So here I'm adding the first change of 15 to the second change, which we thought of as negative five because he decreased the amount of weight he was carrying. So if you're at 15, adding a negative amount would have you going to the left five units, and if you went left five units, that would put you at 10. So again, this does not mean that he's carrying 10 pounds. It's the total change, which means he's carrying 10 pounds more than what he started at. And we'll never know what he started at because it wasn't given in the problem. So the calculated amount was if you gain 15 pounds of weight and you drop five pounds of that weight, relative to whatever you started carrying, then the change would be that you're carrying 10 pounds more than what you started with. So the calculated amount would be 10, technically 10 pounds, but I believe in Math AS you can simply type the number 10 in to get credit for the question.